Good afternoon, Thriving Therapist. How are you? It's so great to see you. I have to apologize. I was not able to tune in last week for our regular scheduled Thriving Thursday Facebook Lives, but I am back again today and I wanted to talk to you about a really important topic and that is taking time off. So I've been watching your discussion on the uh, Facebook group here, and a couple of you have been talking about taking time off. A couple of you have been talking about handling um, no-shows and late cancels and sometimes feeling guilty about taking time off. And I just wanted to hop in here with a couple little reminders um, and a couple little myths that I want to clean up and clear up for you because um, as a private practice clinician, one of the best benefits is that we have flexibility, right, with our schedule. And one of the greatest things about managing your own private practice is that you get to manage your own schedule too. So today I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about permission to take time off. I know this is hard for us to do at different stages in our career. So for the people that I do some coaching with, I do a lot of coaching with um, this audience, uh, with therapists that wanna build a private practice. And sometimes I hear therapists who are just building their practice saying things like, oh, I'm really nervous about taking time off. I don't want my clients to um, not return to me if I take time off or if they start to get upset with me about missing an appointment. And we bend to feel obligated to see our clients when really we need to take that time off for ourselves, whether it's a mental health day or if we're not feeling well or if we want to take vacation time or if we want to take time off for the holidays or if you want to have a no good reason kind of day off, which is also perfectly fine. Um, of course, not all the time, but of course, it is um, our option to be able to take time off. So remember, that's a myth that your clients will not resent you if you take time off. And um, don't forget too that the majority of the people that we work with in private practice in the outpatient arena are not in a 911 crisis state. If they are, then of course it's very complicated. We're not really able to reschedule um, sessions if they need acute care, but they shouldn't be in private practice setting if they do need 911, like urgent acute care. So when you're in private practice, it is possible for us to skip a week or skip um, a session, even if they're on an every other week rotation, it's perfectly fine for you to give yourself permission to take that time off. So I see a few of you joining me live here today. Let me know what stage you're in in your practice. Are you brand new? Are you building a practice? Are you a veteran clinician? Do you struggle with taking time off? Do you feel guilty? Um, sometimes you feel obligated to show up for clients when really we shouldn't. And I'm going to tell you a little story about this. Um, a few years ago, actually many years ago now, when my children were young, um, they are much older now. I have a 15 year old daughter and a 19 year old son, but when they were little and they had a big two week Christmas break, I would feel obligated to schedule patients at that time in that window of the Christmas holiday break. And I had a lot of clients who were saying, oh, the Christmas season is going to be really hard for me this year because maybe they were going through a divorce or a separation or some sort of life transition, or they had just experienced a death in their family or a loss, and they were really worried about making it through the holiday season. Um, Jessica's joining us here, part-time private practice for about a year now. Oh, good for you. I'm so glad that you're on our page. I hope you get lots and lots of good ideas from all of these clinicians from around the globe. Um, but I would have all these clients kind of like bending me to schedule them right before the holiday or right after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, when I really wanted to just take a few days off for myself and spend that time with my little kids who were really excited about uh, being home with their new toys and wanted to play and wanted to make cookies and wanted to um, watch holiday movies and just snuggle up in our pajamas. And I would arrange childcare and I would drive up to my office and I'd scrape the snow off my car and I'd get up there and I was like, God, kind of like begrudgingly going to see these clients. And guess what happened? 
almost nine times out of 10, those people would no show or late cancel on me. And if you can't tell by the tone of my voice when I'm telling this story, I'm telling you guys, I had like smoke coming out of my ears. I was so angry about that. And I ended up feeling like I overextended, I over accommodated for these clients. And then I ended up resenting them which isn't fair at all because it's not their fault, right? But I ended up resenting these clients because um, I would show up for them on a holiday when I really should have just said, I'm unavailable. So the other myth I want to bring to your attention, um, yes, Hira, this is always going to be on um, the Facebook page. She had a, is this Hira? I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm, I just assumed, um, I just said she. Um, if, if this is going to be recorded or saved. All of the Facebook Lives that I do each Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, Eastern are always living on this page. And then now I've also been able to download them and up the, upload them to the Thriving Well Institute YouTube channel. So you can always find them all in one spot right there too. Or you can always find them under the Units tab on this Facebook group, the Thriving Therapist Facebook group. So feel free to, to go back and search to them there. One thing I did want to say about taking time off, though, is you do not need to tell your clients why you're taking time off. So I do want to be sure that you guys are aware of that because it's not your obligation to tell the client why you're taking time off. Um, we are all adults, and if we need to reschedule, all I tell my client is, I'm so sorry, I need to reschedule. I'm not able to make it. Um, I try not to do last minute cancellations, but sometimes I have an illness or I have an issue with my own family or needs with my own kids or whatever has come up, and I've had to cancel a session at the last minute. I always feel bad about that, but you have to be able to listen to yourself and do what's, what's needed for you. So you do not have to disclose that though. Clients will often kind of try to dance around, you know, getting you to disclose why. Um, they'll be like, oh, are you going on vacation? You know, they kind of want to know a little bit more about our personal life. And you can gauge that. Now, there's a lot of debate with clinicians on, you know, whether or not to disclose things. And I have made um, that judgment call myself kind of on a case by case basis. I have some clients that I've worked with for over 10 years and um, they've asked me if I take a week or two off in the summer, they'll say, oh, are you going on a trip? And I feel like at that point in our therapist client relationship, I can say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be going out of town or something. So um, I don't I don't feel like I have to keep that hidden. But you also don't need to disclose that. So I want to just kind of clean up some of those assumptions and myths that therapists have because we're allowed to do that, right? We're allowed to take a mental health day. We're allowed to take a sick day. We are allowed to take a no good reason day off. We're allowed to take time off for the holidays. And I really want you to lean in and listen to yourself because in order to be a therapist who thrives, we have to really lean into our own intuition, our own sense of what's a yes for me. Because when you're in a place of serving your truth and when you're leaning into what's a yes for you, then you're in highest service not only to yourself but to your client population as well. So let me know, you guys, if you have other questions about private practice building, um, how to grow and expand your practice, or little tips about practice management. I'm in here every single Thursday. It's my Thriving Thursday Facebook Lives. And again, they're all stored under the Units tab. So if you ever wanted to pop some popcorn and watch all of the Facebook Live videos, you could certainly binge them all at once. Um, and each week I'm in here talking about different topics on how to be a thriving therapist. So Jessica's saying, I struggle with what to say when they ask, oh, are you going on vacation? If the answer is yes, but I'd rather not disclose, I never know what to say. So it's okay to say, you know, I'm taking some time off. I know it's hard. I sometimes pivot and say something that reflects the validation statement for my clients. So I'll say, I know it's hard to miss appointments, but I'm going to be back again and I'll see you on X date at this time. And I just kind of like, you know, turn the conversation into another direction. So you can steer it in another direction. Again, Jessica, if you feel like you 
um, have a good rapport with your client and you feel like it's a yes for you to say, yeah, actually I'm going out of town, I'm looking forward to it. Sometimes it's healthy to model what that's like. Um, now, cl again, clinicians debate about disclosure. So I'm open to hearing what your thoughts are because there's probably people on this page who would say, I never share anything personal, but I'm not of that camp. I do share certain personal things with um, clients that I feel that that's okay with. And other ones, I would just steer the conversation in another direction to say, you know, I know it's hard when I miss time off and I am taking, you know, X amount of days off. So I won't be in my office that, at that time. And you just kind of pivot over to, but I will see you back here on this date and you just hold your calendar and kind of, you know, refresh them back to um, the time that you're going to be working with them again. Um, Usually when you take the lead in, in that way, clients don't push back again. Um, if, if you feel like you can share you know, something mild, like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be taking a little staycation or a vacation or whatever it is, you can certainly disclose that, but you don't have to. So I wanna reinforce that. You are in the driver's seat when you're working with a client. So you can determine what you share and how you share it, when you share it. You, of course, want to give your clients plenty of notice. That's why I'm doing this Facebook Live today, because I thought, you know, here we are kind of mid-November. And as you look at the rest of 2020, you might want to be starting to think now about which days you want to take off for some winter vacation or winter holidays and what that's going to look like for the rest of this calendar year. So you do want to give people plenty of notice because when you have a very busy full caseload like I have, it becomes very difficult in a month like November when you want to take maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off for Thanksgiving. That's like a lot of clients that I have to kind of juggle around or move. And you know, people understand they're not going to expect you to show up on Thanksgiving and um, and offer sessions, but it is important, I think, to be able to give people plenty of notice. And if you need to move your schedule around or change things, um, be sure to do that with enough plenty of notice. Now, another thing I will say about this is you do not need to then overextend yourself. Say you're taking Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off and you're like, oh, maybe I should put some people on Saturday and I never work Saturday, but maybe I should do that because I'm missing all these other days. No, that is a big, hard no. Do not do that. Um, so I want to remind you guys, do not overextend and overaccommodate when you feel guilty or obligated. It will always be a mistake, right? Because what's going to happen is you're going to end up resenting the clients that you're trying to support. So we never want to get into that dynamic with resentment towards our clients. That is a very prickly place to live as a clinician. You don't want to be there. You're not in high service of your clients that way, and they can feel it, and you can feel it, and it's really icky. So do not ever overextend or overaccommodate. I only made that holiday mistake once, and then I thought, never again. I'm never going to like, you know, bend over backwards to come in on a time when I didn't really feel available to being there and then get really annoyed when my clients were no showing or late canceling on me. So I hope that helps you guys today. Um, again, if you want to catch any of these videos, be sure to look under the units tab um, and you will see them all there. And I will be back here again um, next Thursday. That's right. We have two weeks until Thanksgiving. And then I will not be here doing a Facebook Live on Thanksgiving, but I will be back um, each week bringing you more tips on how to build and grow your thriving practice. So thanks for joining me. And I hope you guys are doing great. And I'll talk to you again soon.